Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Beacon Pines. Last time we left off, we got this prompt, this next riddle. On planet Farple, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. So these were where the comics were, right? Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number four, from the shelf. Once you've got a book, you can either bring it here to me, or just grab a different one. It's a tissue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Luca fifth. grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number five, from the shelf. It must be this one, right? Oh, ah, you found Luca it. removed his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue five. Got it. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rolo's cipher pen. He used to write secret messages everywhere with that. And only I had the special flashlight needed to reveal it. But I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Jeff for this purple light bulb. Parted with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, Rolo. Now let's see here. Kato began flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. Get away with such a grift. He continued flipping. Only found in gruff grub cart. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. That's it. Grift in grub cart. Grift in griffin. Griffin scrub cart. He wants me to go to Griffin's snack stand. Ah, brilliant. I guess you're off then. Good luck on the rest of the scavenger hunt. Thanks, Kato. Go to Griffin's snack stand. Okay. Well, I do have to talk to you, Jace. That was your name, right? Hey, Jace. Still working through the newest Hank Atomic? You know it. Some fascinating canon towards the end. Did you know? Hank Atomic Shrink Array does technically doesn't technically shrink stuff. It uses inverse quantum particle decay to literally grow the entire universe around an object, leaving that object unaltered. So it just looks shrunk compared to everything else? Bingo. That's wild. But Jace, no spoilers, please. All right, sorry. Yeah, you really are bad about those spoilers, friend. Jeez. Now Rolo's never gonna read it. You're gonna be like, oh, Rolo, you gotta read number five, and be like, I already know what happens in number five. Because you spoiled everything. All right, what's up, Griffin? So that's why you were like, did you go to the library? Hey, Griffin. Did Rolo Before come? Luca could finish his sentence, Griffin handed him a corn dog. Oh, that's it? Bought and paid for. Enjoy. I thought there was supposed to be a riddle or something. Luca shrugged, taking a sizable bite out of the corn dog. Yuck. It's cold. Oh yeah, that's been sitting here for a while. Rolo wanted me to be sure to give you that one specifically. Well, that's just... Luca tongued at his cheeks, feeling something rough between his teeth. This is quite the little scavenger... Well, not scavenger hunt, but little, little trail of riddles. He reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. Good thing I didn't swallow it. Oh, come on. He shook off the bits of corn dog to read the slip. A pickup when you need some pep. Near the fountain, up the step. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn dog. Uh, this is getting to be a whole thing. Pick up when you need some pep near the fountain up the step. Yeah, so it's the little little coffee shop over here, right? Gotta be up the step. Talk to you. So yeah, this is why you were talking about Griffin. Here you are, Luca. There's no way I'm actually doing this. It's way below my pay grade. Oh, come on, you big stiff. Let the kids have some fun. Fine. Marolo owes me one. Lumi waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. While it takes flight but has no wings, your final task of friendship brings. See, that wasn't so hard. Hard. Ugh, I feel cheapened somehow. I think it's sweet. While it takes flight but has no wings, your final task of friendship brings. It takes flight but has no wings. Is there a flightless... No. I was gonna say, is there a flightless bird resident? But, uh, no. Hmm. Good luck, Luca. This one's like an actual riddle. Um, takes flight but has no wings. That would be balloons, and it's right here. Hey. 
Hey. Did you find the comic book? Yep. And you got the corn dog? Yeah. Well then. I know it doesn't make up for what I said. But here, you've earned this. Rollo sheepishly handed Luca the balloons. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. Flight. Oh yeah, that'll be useful for problems. Thanks. You didn't have to go to all this trouble. I'm sorry I got so mad. Dang it, you're supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice before me. Just let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With everything that's happened, with your mom and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. Be a good friend, you know? When you said you were hanging out with someone else, I kind of freaked out. Rolo. Still my turn. I felt like if you needed some new friend to help you, it meant that I wasn't good enough. But that was selfish and wrong. I was wrong. I'm so sorry, Luca. Okay, apology over. You can talk now. Luca threw himself at Rolo, hugging him as tightly as he could. Rolo, I don't deserve you. I don't deserve you either. That's why we deserve each other. So, what else do you want to do today? We could snoop around and try to find some info about your mom. Snoop where? We could probably sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ while everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all the stuff those clipboards write down? I wonder if we get caught. I think I've had enough excitement for one week. Let's just make the rest of the day about us. Really? Yeah, the rest of the world can wait one more day. You know, I have been wanting to get some work done at the MCDC at Mission Control. The aim is a bit unpredictable. It sounds perfect. Head to the treehouse with Rolo. Oh, and we got balloons, and wow, they really waggle all around. So you can tell they just kind of have an image anchored <laughs> to, uh, to Luca's hand, so the balloons just freak out when I walk. Alrighty, let's go. Roxy, any reaction to us being friends again? Ha ha ha, is this distracting? No? Okay. Okay, flights. I mean, I, I don't think that charm would be useful here. It seems like we can get back here pretty easily, so I can just check back in on it occasionally. Alright. Oh, I almost forgot. I ran into your grand this morning. She asked me to give you this. Rolo handed Luca an unopened letter. I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it now. A letter? Luca, some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand. If I am honest, I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried. Everything I've done. I did for you. I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. Uh-oh. Gran talking about the rebel forces. Am I just gonna wake up tomorrow to see Gran just... running through the streets with like a... Uzi taking out perennial harvest people. <laughs> oh god, what are you gonna do, Gran? I love you too, Gran. Luca folded the paper into his pocket and headed up the ladder. One thing's for sure, shit is really about to hit the fan. What's up with the letter? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whenever you want. Look at us hanging out. You know, you really didn't have to go to all that trouble just to apologize. I know, we'd been looking forward to the festival for weeks. After I ruined everything with my big mouth, this was the best way to make sure you still had a good time without me. Rolo. Luca was at a loss for words, but that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. Festival seemed nice. Was it nice? We can still go. Nah, this is fine. Well, there's always next year. Sadly, this was untrue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff's really about to hit the fan, huh? A distant rumble shook the treehouse. Huh? What was that? Aw oh, man, we missed the fireworks? 
It was not fireworks. Yeah, I was about to say, that was a very big rumble for fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Are they like... Did, did Gran, like, plant a bomb at perennial harvest? It is a fertilizer plant, and fertilizer is used in explosives, I do know. I wonder if they're blowing up the factory. That would be quite, quite the escalation, I must say. Maybe they don't want perennial harvest here? And yeah, I mean, if it's a fertilizer plant... I'm not sure of the specifics of it, but... Like I said, fertilizer is used in explosives, so... Something as old and cruel as time itself. Duh? Are we awakening an old god? Huh? Don't you- I, I turned you off. Stop that. A shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, unfathomable chill. What old god is Gran awakening? Before they could react, it encased them in ice. Two boys, reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. That is not what I expected. Oh my god. Did Grand and the rebel group seriously... I, I, that's all I can think of with this. How else would you... Is, well, you awaken some kind of old god shit, like in Silent Hill. In a silent treehouse turned statuary, in a town brought low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends, alone, together, for the rest of time. The end. Oh. <laughs> We just made up with Rolo, damn it! Wow, I really didn't expect to get a death ending like that. That, uh, that surprised me. That surprised me. No, that can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. There are more endings. More possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all, until we find the one that fits. Okay, well Rumble uh, certainly did not work. Uh, I'm kind of interested in going... Flight is an option now, yeah, for that particular encounter. Hmm, there's also the Tickle route? Something, something differed there? Hmm... Yeah, you know, let, let's switch branches. Let's go tickle. Well, time to bust out the tickles. You've played this part of the branch already? Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice. Skip to where you left off. Chapter 4. The Best Policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But finding Rolla was his primary concern. Okay. Yeah, so we're back over here. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Roxy and Fitz looked drained. Okay, yep. Alright, so that's a very useful feature that it skips me to where I left off. Alright, we're just hopping around. We had the crazy everyone got frozen d death scene. So let's let's skip to something else. <laughs> It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for Rolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling, but this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rolo and I weren't just playing in Weepwood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. And we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And now my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just... Wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. 
With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Roller's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. Roxy about to beat some ass? I can't just sit around, I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You can go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. Oh, Roxy's gonna... You really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. Wait at the treehouse in case Rolo shows up. Okay, and it's... I mean, Iggy's not going to be there, right? Because Iggy wasn't actually hit by the goo. So maybe Beck will be there instead? I have to Mr. assume that's the case. Jumped with a start. Oh, don't, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But that dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. Whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. What? Why the music? Nuncreed? What the hell's up with you, huh? I don't like this. Silly boy's antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. Think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Someone took him, I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's uh... shoulder. <laughs> yeah, that's why the music- I heard the music before things actually got creepy, so I was like, wait a minute. Dang it, boy, if there is something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Uh peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. Are you the one in the suit? The person in the suit was large, and you are large. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. So could I have not even done this path if I didn't have this yet? Maybe I already had this when I opened this path. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. Or... We're about to get kidnapped. This music does not sound happy. Yesterday, Rolo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? You were with Rolo when he went missing? Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. Oh, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Oh, God. <laughs> We're about to get got by Mr. Nuncreed. Is this why you're so interested in Gran? Because you're working for Perennial Harvest and you, you probably have a tip that Gran is like part of the rebellion or whatever? 
Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncrete's hand clamped down on his shoulder. But you Van Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? We were all so close, so close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncrete manhandled Luca into the phone booth. Oh? Uh, what are you doing? It's out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. Shit. Yep, it's the same. That that's the same. You're you're the one in the suit. Pounded the glass. The floor dropped from under his feet. Yeah, I was wondering if this was like a kidnap booth. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule, plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air, and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over in intercom. Or you weren't the one in the suit, but you do work for them. He knows too much. The end. Oh, <laughs> we got Luca killed twice this episode. <laughs> Damn it. Wait, no, this isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, well, I mean that's that's a that's another ending there. Wow, things were things were going really happy there for a while. We had like a few episodes of you know, happiness and everything's cool and everything's chill and everything's good. And then we got to bad things. Very, very quickly. Oh, Mr. Nuncreed, I didn't trust your creepy ass. Okay, well, there's... That stuff going on. Um, we could do that path, or I could go along that path more. Let's... Hmm. I'm imagining break... And flight are probably the way we make progress on both of these paths. So the question is, which path do I want to go down next? I think I want to see what happens on the rest of the Beck path. Here I'm teaming up with Iggy. And Beck's cooler. So, it seems like there's not a version of the ending where Beck continues to have gray hair. It seems like Iggy getting messed up is probably the only way to progress on that side of things. I love this kind of stuff. I, I read a bunch of books like this where it's like... You have to keep, like, restarting and restarting and restarting and find the correct bat, uh, path forward. Some of my favorite books when I was little were about this kind of stuff. ReZero is also very, very interesting for this same kind of reason, where it's like, you gotta find the perfect path forward. Same for Stein's Gate. I just like the idea of this. Clouds began to break. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Sure, you can meet Rolo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rolo I'd tell him about- Luca stopped himself mid-sentence. Promise you tell him what? Spit it out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. If there's a juicy secret, you gotta tell me. Okay. You can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you both what happens. Heck yeah. Okay, and yeah, the the way the only way forward in this path is for Luca to go to the tree it's go to the go to the warehouse alone. So you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate, looming mansion, rich reclusive owners. It even smells shady. Nick grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. Oh? Okay. So that's where this path is going, huh? What did you do? First of all... I told you so! Second... Hide.
Oh, there's one of the hazmat suit assholes. Oh my god, this is so cool. Seeing all the pieces come together and stuff like this. I love this kind of stuff. That's Harris Valentine. Who's that she's talking to? Shh. I expect you to return that suit in working order. Okay, this is what we heard about. This is what we heard about with the, um... It, it was the mayor, right? Talking to you, saying that, like, uh... You know, I hope you... Uh... You, you were talking about returning the suit, or whatever. And you didn't do anything to piss off Mr. Kerr. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. That means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threats. Now this is what I was talking about. This voice was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when this all inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. Can't wait to see the look on that Rube Kerr's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. Still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. But there's one thing I've learned. It's that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting Shady. That's just flat out supervillain talk. You don't mind me asking... Why? Why are you doing all of this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask. Hair pushing out from all corners. Yup. I was about to say it's it's gonna be you, right? So you so the plan that you have is working with Eris Valentine probably to get into get get um uh perennial harvest out of here. So you're working with Valentine, that's why you're apologizing to me about the things you have to do. And yeah, you're gonna sabotage all of this stuff. Alright, Grand, so this was your idea. You're not gonna be rolling through the streets with an Uzi doing drive-bys, but... Yeah. Family. A chill ran down Luca's spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can carefully, certainly, uh, respect. Grand tussled her hair back under the face mask. As soon as it mentioned a bunch of hair, I knew. Just remember. Keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need lessons in rousing suspicion. Grand gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. And yeah, you said everything you were doing, you're doing for me, but Grand, what sort of horrible things are you doing? <sighs> I'm I'm still working with Hmm. No, I was gonna say maybe they were planning to blow up the fertilizer plant, but I don't know if that's the case anymore because we got attacked by like a swarm of ice, not an explosion. So I don't know what you're doing down there, but you said in your letter that you're 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 sorry I did everything I did for you, and you even mentioned here it was for family, so Huh. Okay. Bye bye, Gran. Well, we found out some shit, didn't we? Everything, all the pieces are coming together. Chapter 5. Well, that's a good spot to go ahead and end this episode off because it does save there, so... Unfortunately, we are going to be ending things off, but we got a lot done this episode. We got a lot of revelations and everything, so... Hmm. Yeah, interested to see where it's going now. It's starting to get to the point where everything's kind of webbing so much, I'm going to have to, like keep notes and rewatch stuff between episodes because before things were relatively simple. Now things are starting to get a little bit complex. Gran is working with the Valentines to put a spot stop to uh Perennial Harvest. Perennial Harvest is obviously up to some shit with their crazy ooze. So hmm. Alright, well, I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time for some more.